The Vicksburg Campaign was a series of maneuvers and battles in the Western theater of the American Civil War directed against Vicksburg, Mississippi, a fortress city that dominated the last Confederate-controlled section of the Mississippi River. The Union Army of the Tennessee under Marge, Gen. Ulysses S. Grant gained control of the river by capturing this stronghold and defeating L.T. Gen. John C. Pemberton's forces stationed there. The campaign consisted of many important naval operations, troop maneuvers, failed initiatives, and 11 distinct battles from December 26, 1862. To July 4, 1863, military historians divide the campaign into two formal phases, operations against Vicksburg and Grant's operations against Vicksburg. Grant initially planned a two-pronged approach in which half of his army, under Marge, Gen. William Tecumseh Sherman, would advance to the Yazoo River and attempt to reach Vicksburg from the northeast while Grant took the remainder of the army down the Mississippi Central Railroad. Both of these initiatives failed. Grant conducted a number of experiments, or expeditions, Grant's bio-operations, that attempted to enable waterborne access to the Mississippi south of Vicksburg's artillery batteries. All five of these initiatives failed as well. Finally, Union gunboats and troop transport boats ran the batteries at Vicksburg and met up with Grant's men who had marched overland in Louisiana. On April 29 and April 30, 1863, Grant's army crossed the Mississippi and landed at Bruinsburg, Mississippi. An elaborate series of demonstrations and diversions fooled the Confederates and the landings occurred without opposition. Over the next 17 days, Grant maneuvered his army inland and won five battles, captured the state capital of Jackson, Mississippi, and assaulted and laid siege to Vicksburg. After Pemberton's army surrendered on July 4, and when Port Hudson surrendered to Marge, Gen. Nathaniel P. Banks on July 9, Texas and Arkansas were effectively cut off from the Confederacy and the Mississippi River was once again open for northern commerce to reach the Gulf of Mexico, and as a supply line for the Union Army. Grant's Vicksburg campaign is studied as a masterpiece of military operations and a major turning point of the war. Background Vicksburg was strategically vital to the Confederates. Jefferson Davis said, Vicksburg is the nail head that holds the South's two halves together, while in their hands. It blocked Union navigation down the Mississippi, together with control of the mouth of the Red River and of Port Hudson to the south. It allowed communication with the states west of the river, upon which the Confederates depended extensively for horses, cattle and reinforcements. The natural defenses of the city were ideal, earning it the nickname, the Gibraltar of the Confederacy. It was located on a high bluff overlooking a horseshoe-shaped bend in the river, the Soto Peninsula, making it almost impossible to approach by ship. North and east of Vicksburg was the Mississippi Delta, an area 200 miles north to south and up to 50 miles across, which has been described by geographer Warren E. Grab hours an astonishingly complex network of intersecting waterways, some of which were navigable by small steamboats. The regions between modern rivers and bays formed closed basins called back swamps, of which Grabau judged whether permanently flooded or not. The back swamps were, for all practical purposes, untamed wildernesses, utterly impassable by a man on horseback or by any form of wheeled vehicle, and very difficult even for a man on foot. About 12 miles up the Yazoo River were Confederate batteries and entrenchments at Haynes Bluff. The Louisiana land west of Vicksburg was also difficult, with many streams and poor country roads, widespread winter flooding, and it was on the opposite side of the river from the fortress. The city had been under Union naval attack before. Admiral David Farragut moved up the river after his capture of New Orleans and on May 18, 1862, demanded the surrender of Vicksburg. Farragut had insufficient troops to force the issue, and he moved back to New Orleans. 
He returned with a flotilla in June 1862, but their attempts to bombard the fortress into surrender failed. They shelled Vicksburg throughout July and fought some minor battles with a few Confederate vessels in the area. But their forces were insufficient to attempt her landing, and they abandoned attempts to force the surrender of the city. Farragut investigated the possibility of bypassing the fortified cliffs by digging a canal across the neck of the river's bend, the De Soto Peninsula. On June 28, Brig. Gen. Thomas Williams, attached to Farragut's command, began digging work on the canal by employing local laborers and sim soldiers. Many of the men fell victim to tropical diseases and heat exhaustion, and the work was abandoned by July 24. In the fall of 1862, Marge, Gen. Henry W. Halleck was promoted from command of the Western Theater to General-in-Chief of all Union armies. On November 23, he indicated to Grant his preference for a major move down the Mississippi to Vicksburg, in Halleck's style. He left considerable initiative to design a campaign, an opportunity that the pugnacious Grant seized. Halleck has received criticism for not moving promptly overland from Memphis, Tennessee, to seize Vicksburg during the summer when he was in command on the scene. He believed that the Navy could capture the fortress on its own. Not knowing that the naval force was insufficiently manned with ground troops to finish the job, what might have achieved success in the summer of 1862 was no longer possible by November because the Confederates had amply reinforced the garrison. By that time, Grant's army marched south down the Mississippi Central Railroad, making a forward base at Holly Springs. He planned a two-pronged assault in the direction of Vicksburg. His principal subordinate, Marge, Gen. William T. Sherman, was to advance down the river with four divisions and Grant would continue with the remaining forces down the railroad line to Oxford, where he would wait for developments, hoping to lure the Confederate Army out of the city to attack him in the vicinity of Granada, Mississippi. On the Confederate side, forces in Mississippi were under the command of L.T. Gen. John C. Pemberton, an officer from Pennsylvania who chose to fight for the South. Pemberton had approximately 12,000 men in Vicksburg and Jackson, Mississippi, and Marge. Gen. Earl Van Dorn had approximately 24,000 at Grenada. Meanwhile, political forces were at work. President Abraham Lincoln had long recognized the importance of Vicksburg, he wrote, Vicksburg is the key. The war can never be brought to a close until the key is in our pocket. Lincoln also envisioned a two-pronged defensive, but one up and down the river. Marge, Gen. John A. McClernand, a war Democrat politician, had convinced Lincoln that he could lead an army down the river and take Vicksburg. Lincoln approved his proposal and wanted Marge, Gen. Nathaniel P. Banks to advance upriver from New Orleans at the same time. McClernand began organizing regiments, sending them to Memphis. Back in Washington, D.C., Halleck was nervous about McClernand and gave Grant control of all troops in his own department. McClernand's troops were split into two corps, one under McClernand, the other under Sherman. McClernand complained but to no avail. Grant appropriated his troops. One of several maneuvers in a private dispute within the Union Army between Grant and McClernand that continued throughout the campaign. Battles in the operations against Vicksburg, December 1862 January 1863 the operations against Vicksburg phase of the Vicksburg campaign comprises the following battles. Chickasaw Bayou Sherman disembarked with three divisions at Johnson's plantation on the Yazoo River to approach the Vicksburg defenses from the northeast. On December 27, the Federals pushed their lines forward through the swamps toward the Walnut Hills, which were strongly defended. On December 28, several futile attempts were made to get around these defenses. On December 29, Sherman ordered a frontal assault, which was repulsed with heavy casualties, and then withdrew. During this period, the overland half of Grant's offensive was failing. 
His lines of communication were disrupted by raids by Van Dorn and Brig. Gen. Nathan Bedford Forrest, who destroyed his large supply depot at Holly Springs. Unable to subsist his army without these supplies, Grant abandoned his overland advance. In early January, McClernand arrived at Memphis with the corps he had recruited and commenced his operation down the Mississippi. On January 4, he ordered Sherman to attach his 15th Corps to the expedition, calling his combined 32,000-man force the Army of the Mississippi. This was a direct provocation against Grant, but Sherman acceded to the senior officer. Sherman suggested beginning with a combined land and naval movement against Fort Hindman, on the Arkansas River at Arkansas Post. 50 miles up the Arkansas from its confluence with the Mississippi, a base from which Confederate gunboats were attacking Union shipping on the river. The expedition started without notifying Grant. Arkansas post-Union boats under Rear Admiral David Dixon Porter began landing troops near Arkansas post in the evening of January 9. The troops started up river towards Fort Hindman. Sherman's corps overran Confederate trenches, and the defenders retreated to the protection of the fort and adjacent rifle pits. Porter, on January 10, moved his fleet towards Fort Hindman and bombarded it, withdrawing at dusk. Union artillery fired on the fort from positions across the river on January 11, and the infantry moved into position for an attack. Union ironclads commenced shelling the fort and Porter's fleet passed it to cut off any retreat. As a result of this envelopment, and the attack by Morgan's troops, the Confederate command surrendered in the afternoon. Although Union losses were high and the victory did not contribute to the capture of Vicksburg, it did eliminate one more impediment to Union shipping on the Mississippi. Grant was not happy to learn that McClernand had conducted the operation without his approval, considering it a distraction from his main objective of Vicksburg, but since it had been successful and his ally Sherman had suggested it, he took no punitive action. However, he ordered McClernand back to the Mississippi and assumed personal command of the campaign on January 13 at Millican's Bend, 15 miles northwest of Vicksburg. Grant's Bayou Operations, January-March 1863. That winter, Grant conducted a series of initiatives to approach and capture Vicksburg, termed Grant's Bayou Operations. Their general theme was to use or construct alternative waterways so that troops could be positioned within striking distance of Vicksburg, without requiring a direct approach on the Mississippi under the Confederate guns. Grant's canal the Williams Canal across the Soto Peninsula had been abandoned by A.D.M. Farragut and Brig. Gen. Williams in July 1862, but it had the potential to offer a route downriver that bypassed Vicksburg's guns. In late January 1863, Sherman's men, at the urging of Grant, who was advised by the Navy that President Lincoln liked the idea, resumed digging. Sherman derisively called the work Butler's Ditch, which was barely six feet wide by six feet deep. Grant, undoubtedly influenced by Lincoln's continuous inquiries as to the status of the canal, ordered Sherman to expand the canal to 60 feet wide and 7 feet deep and the effort became known as Grant's Canal. It was not properly engineered based upon the hydrology of the Mississippi River, however, and a sudden rise in the river broke through the dam at the head of the canal and flooded the area. The canal began to fill up with backwater and sediment. In a desperate effort to rescue the project, two huge steam-driven dipper dredges, Hercules and Sampson, attempted to clear the channel, but the dredges were exposed to Confederate artillery fire from the bluffs at Vicksburg and driven the way. By late March work on the canal was abandoned. Lake Providence Expedition Grant ordered Brig. Gen. James B. McPherson to construct a canal of several hundred yards from the Mississippi to Lake Providence, northwest of the city. This would allow passage to the Red River, through Bayes Baxter and Macon, and the Tensis and Black Rivers. Reaching the Red River, Grant's force could join with banks at Port Hudson. McPherson reported that the connection was navigable on March 18th.
but the few ordinary Ohio River boats that had been sent to Grant for navigation of the Bayes could only transport 8,500 men, far too few to tip the balance at Port Hudson. Although this was the only one of the Bayou expeditions to successfully bypass the Vicksburg defenses, Historian Ed Bess calls this episode the Lake Providence Boondoggle Jezu Pass expedition. The next attempt was to get to the high ground of the lowest bluffs above Haynes Bluff and below Yazoo City by blowing up the Mississippi River levee near Moon Lake, some 150 miles above Vicksburg, near Helena, Arkansas, and following the Yazoo Pass into the Cold Water River, then to the Tallahatchie River and finally into the Yazoo River at Greenwood, Mississippi. The dikes were blown up on February 3, beginning what was called the Yazoo Pass Expedition. Ten Union boats, under the command of L.T. C.M.D.R. Watson Smith, with army troops under the command of Brig. Gen. Benjamin Prentice began moving through the pass on February 7 but low-hanging trees destroyed anything on the gunboats above deck and Confederates felled more trees to block the way. These delays allowed the Confederates time to quickly construct a Fort Pemberton near the confluence of the Tallahatchie and Yalabusha rivers near Greenwood, Mississippi, which repulsed the naval force on March 11, March 14, and March 16. The Union effort collapsed in early April. Steele's Bayou Expedition Admiral Porter started an effort on March 16 to go up the Yazoo Delta via Steele's Bayou, just north of Vicksburg, to Deer Creek. This would outflank Fort Pemberton and allow landing troops between Vicksburg and Yazoo City. Confederates once again felled trees in the path, and willow reeds fouled the boat's paddle wheels. This time, the Union boats became immobilized and Confederate cavalry and infantry threatened to capture them. Sherman sent infantry assistance to repel the Confederates bedeviling Porter, but Porter's approach was abandoned as too difficult. Duckport Canal Grant's final attempt was to dig another canal from Duckport Landing to Walnut Bayou, aimed at getting lighter boats past Vicksburg. By the time the canal was almost finished, on April 6, water levels were declining, and none but the lightest of flatboats could get through. Grant abandoned this canal and started planning anew. Grant claimed in his memoirs that he had undertaken these experiments primarily to keep his troops busy during the flooded and disease-laden winter months and that he had had no expectation of success. This claim is contradicted by correspondence from Grant at the time. Plan for the 1863 campaign and initial movements. All of the Bayou operations were failures, but Grant was known for his stubborn determination and would not quit. His final option was bold but risky. March the army down the west side of the Mississippi, cross the river south of Vicksburg and either attack Vicksburg from the south and the east or join forces with Banks, capture Port Hudson, and then together reduce Vicksburg. Porter would have to sneak past the guns to get sufficient gunboats and transport ships south of the city. Once they had completed the downstream passage, they would not be able to return past Vicksburg's guns because the river current would slow them too much. On March 29, McClernand set his troops to work building bridges and corduroy roads. They filled in the swamps in their way as well, and by April 17 they had a rough, tortuous 70-mile road from Millican's Bend to the proposed river crossing at Hard Times, Louisiana, below Vicksburg. On April 16, a clear night with no moon, Porter sent seven gunboats and three empty troop transports loaded with stores to run the bluff, taking care to minimize noise and lights. But the preparations were ineffective. Confederate sentries sighted the boats, and the bluff exploded with massive artillery fire. Fires were set along the banks to improve visibility. The Union gunboats answered back. Porter observed that the Confederates mainly hit the high parts of his boats, reasoned that they could not depress their guns and had them hug the east shore right under Confederate cannon, so close he could hear their commanders giving orders, shells flying overhead. 
The fleet survived with little damage, 13 men were wounded and none killed. The Henry Clay was disabled and burned at the water's edge. On April 22, six more boats loaded with supplies made the run, one boat did not make it. Though no one was killed, the crew floated downstream on the boat's remnants. The final piece of Grant's strategy was to divert Pemberton's attention from the river crossing site that the Union troops would use. Grant chose two operations, a feint by Sherman against Snyder's Bluff, Mississippi, north of Vicksburg, and a daring cavalry raid through central Mississippi by Col. Benjamin Grierson, known as Grierson's Raid. The former was inconclusive, but the latter was a success. Grierson was able to draw out significant Confederate forces to chase him, and Pemberton's defenses were dispersed too far around the state. Opposing forces. Union Marge. Gen. Ulysses S. Grant's Union Army of the Tennessee started the campaign with about 44,000 men, which grew by July to 75,000. The army was composed of five corps, the 13th Corps under Marge, Gen. John A. McClernand, the 15th Corps under Marge, Gen. William T. Sherman, the 17th Corps under Marge, Gen. James B. McPherson, a three-division detachment of the 16th Corps under Marge, Gen. Cadwallader C. Washburn, and a detachment from the District of Northeast Louisiana under Brig, Gen. Elias S. Dennis. The 9th Corps, commanded by Marge, Gen. John G. Park, joined the Army in mid-June. Confederate L.T. Gen. John C. Pemberton's Confederate Army of Mississippi, approximately 30,000 men, consisted of five divisions, under Marge, Gens. William W. Loring, Carter L. Stevenson, John H. Forney, Martin L. Smith, and John S. Bowen, General Joseph E. Johnston's forces in Raymond and Jackson, Mississippi, about 6,000 men, were elements of his Department of the West, including the brigades of Brig, Gen. John Gray, Carl, Peyton H. Colquitt, and Brig, Gen. William H. T. Walker.